over the for them to we walked what two or three weeks ago now. Yeah, I think it's still a work in progress. It's been quite slow really, but yeah. What we found was that the patients who um, had uh, given us blood before 2019, so these people had never seen the SARS-CoV-2 virus, they didn't produce any interferon gamma. But the patients who um, had acute COVID-19, so where we took um, blood samples over a short period of time, while they were sick, they were making interferon gamma, which is entirely appropriate. So that's what the immune system should do. But as they recovered, the interferon gamma went away. But what we found with the patients with long COVID, and these were people where we started taking blood from six months after their infection, their interferon gamma was still there. And it remained high for, in some cases, months or years after their infection. Nice you can see that here. So all the nice black uh, lung tissue is replaced by this what we call ground glass area. It was centimeters rather than 22 over there. And finally, we have this set of image. This is about three months after discharge. Their immune systems were responding to essentially nothing. We were not putting anything into these cultures. We just left their white blood cells essentially like in a Petri dish, and they were already making um, uh, inflammatory markers. So it's normally made by the immune system in order to fight off viruses, um, but normally it gets switched off once the virus has been cleared. What made uh, what makes interferon gamma um, somewhat interesting is that it can be given as a therapy for certain viral infections and in people um, historically with uh, things like hepatitis C. And one of the side effects of interferon gamma treatment is that um, patients experience fatigue, they experience depression, they experience muscle ache and a lot of the other things that are commonly associated with long COVID. And so this is why we made this connection between the interferon gamma production that we saw in the patients with long COVID and their symptoms.